We are men of the future, Gottlich, shouted the wiry man, dramatically throwing his arms into the air above his greasy, matted mop of white hair. His exaggerated motion betrayed the fanaticism that had come to a head, a symptom of years of inadequate sleep. There were deep, brown stains on his lab coat that no amount of scrubbing or harsh cleaner had managed to erase. It hung too loosely over his emaciated shoulders. How dare they? He continued. Those fools at the National Science Foundation are absolute fools for denying me more test subjects and rescinding my pittance, meager as it was. Oh, Fritz, listen to yourself. You just described the NSF as fools twice in the same sentence, replied his partner and lab assistant, Gottlich. Can't you see what a travesty this is? Our work here is on the cutting edge of dimensional science. They can't do this to me. Gottlich nervously ran his fingers through the strands of his thin, graying hair. He was trying his best not to poke the proverbial beast despite his desire to be done with his whole ordeal. I don't know, Fritz. We've been at this a long time with no meaningful results. What do you want me to say? Fritz puffed up his chest, aiming to look like an aggressive gorilla asserting his dominance, but his visage and stature were more akin to a feeble, diseased robin flashing the patchy red feathers on its chest and floundering at the attempt of seducing a mate. I want you to say that you're with me 100% and beyond. You'll see this thing through with me, won't you, old friend? said Fritz. His coarse, obstinate cry fizzled into a desperate, pleading whisper, and his previously thrust chest seemed almost concave as it deflated. I'd like to. I really would. But the Foundation made a lot of good points. Those prisoners that they gave us. It was right to call it cruel and unusual said Gottlich. Those men were weak. If they were worth a damn, I could have gotten ten times the raw data. We... we broke them, Fritz. Utterly. And have you taken a look in the mirror lately? You've the parlor and figure of a junkie coming down from a week-long bender. It's not healthy for a man of your age. And besides, we haven't come close to proving your theory. Fritz grabbed at clumps of his oily hair, the frustration written on his face, bold and blatant as a roadside billboard. You don't believe in the anti-dimension, do you, old friend? He asked, even though he already knew the answer. Sadness tinged the crackling warble of his vocal cords. Don't do this to me, Fritz. I've been with you every step of the way, from the first breakthrough into the dimensional planes. I was there when you envisioned the idea of a dimension with no dimensions, where consciousness could fold together. I felt your exuberance, your hopes, your dream that this discovery would mend the wounds that afflict humanity. I, I, I aided you in getting support from the NSF. I suggested and oversaw the transport of death row inmates to our facility. I saw what it did to them. Vile or not, we destroyed their psyches, we obliterated their minds, and sometimes their bodies. Did you think I could look past that? My own involvement, the, the gibbering idiots, Screaming schizophrenics, the puddles of melted flesh. I've, I've had enough. Maybe there is an anti-dimension, but is it really worth the cost? Is it really worth the blood and shattered neurons? We've been searching for nearly a decade now, 
Is it worth it after all this time? After all this destruction that we've wrought? They were scum, Gottlich. Murderers, rapists, and degenerates. Serving scientific achievement was the best fate they could hope for. Otherwise, they would have spent their lives rotting away in a cell, never contributing anything to society. Destroyed them? No, we saved them. We gave them a greater purpose. For what higher goal is there than the unification of mankind? All men knowing and understanding each other. How can there be conflict when consciousnesses have touched? How can there be suffering when we all know our brother's pain? How can there be petty disagreements when our souls have been inextricably linked by the nature of the anti-dimension? It's just a theory. You don't know what will happen if someone enters the anti-dimension. How do you know that we haven't already found it? What if the anti-dimension eradicates everything including a man's very existence? We could have sent hundreds there and afterwards never known that they existed in the first place. Can't we just leave it as it is? A theory? And let my life's work fall on someone else's lap while the world forgets about Fritz? Gottlich, theory or not, with or without you, I will find the anti-dimension. How? We have no subjects. No money, no support, and frankly, I'm about ready to hang up my lab coat for good. All we have is this lab, a bunch of controlled substances, and the two of us. Who will you send this time? Fritz grinned maniacally, his smattering of remaining yellow teeth showing from between chapped lips. I will send myself. Gottlich subconsciously stepped back like a cowering animal. You wouldn't. You can't. You've seen the results. Vegetables, madman, and corpses. What if you find yet another dimension of unspeakable terror or mind-shattering improbability? Then I will die and my work with me. If death is inevitable, I would rather die pursuing my theory. But I have one last request. Consider it the last wish of a man on his deathbed. Should I ignore it then? Dead men do not know or care if their wishes are fulfilled. I'm not dead yet, old friend. And my request will have to be fulfilled before I am in a casket. Stay with me, perform this procedure, and let me fail with dignity. Everything I have worked toward hinges on this paltry imagined place. We are near the precipice of the mountain that we started to climb all those years ago. All I ask is that you stay with me when we reach the peak. One more experiment, Gottlich. One more time. That's all I ask. Once more, and then you are free to forget about crazy old Fritz and the friendship we had. Gottlich rubbed the back of his neck as he contemplated the full ramifications of agreeing. If things went sour, he would be responsible for Fritz's death. But if he left now and never looked back, he and Fritz would be destined to obscurity despite the actual impact they had left. They would be the footnote, rather than the header, the article, rather than the textbook. As Gottlich wrestled between logic and weariness, Fritz eyed him with a blazing, passionate leer that contradicted his advanced years. It was a look that would have been more at home on the face of a rebellious teenager than the wrinkled, sagging mess of a man that was swiftly approaching the age of 70. Gottlich's gaze, however, was more appropriate for his age and situation. He was dead tired and it showed. 
Dark circles framed his eyes, reflecting the stark exhaustion that was usually reserved for war vets and battered slaves. He fought the urge to flee, knowing that he was Fritz's best chance at success. No other was capable enough or deft enough to operate their custom intravenous contraption. All right, I'll do it. But this is the last time. After, I'm done. Don't try to convince me again, if you survive. More likely, you'll burst an artery or go mad, said Gottlick. You can't go where you already are. I'm nuttier than Squirrel Scat. Let me have this last hurrah. Gottlick let out a strange, choked laugh. The sound held no humor or joy, just anxiety and fear. Enough chatter. Let's just get this over with, he replied. What are you worried about? I'm sure we'll get the proper dosage. We have the right drugs. It is just a matter of percentages. <sighs> if you say so. Gottlick had started to worry even more. Not that Fritz would die, but that this experiment would rank among the other countless failures. He feared that his nearly unhinged partner could not handle another. Fritz, however, was as confident as he had always been, despite the fried mines and pulverized corpses. Fritz laid on the uncomfortable mattress of their used hospital bed in the same position where countless prison inmates had gone mad, had their bones crushed or bled out via every orifice. Every attempt had ended in trauma. Gottlick could hear failure whispering dark thoughts in his ears and licking with a raspy tongue at the lobes of his brain. He tightened the leather straps around Fritz's wrists, steadied his quivering hand, and inserted the needle into the inside of Fritz's elbow. Gottlick fiddled with a few dials until they were to his liking, and the procedure began. Fritz felt a symphony of chemicals slide into his veins. Sparks blinked in and out of existence at the edge of his vision and crept in until they filled the entirety of the small room. His world swam and then swung loose through the barrier of dimensions as if reality were a pendulum and another lay just beyond its arc of motion. Fritz still held a vague concept of the lab and Gottlick in his perception, but most of it had been swept away to a world of pale blue, pockmarked and cavernous stone structures that twisted and arched in physically impossible tangles. The sky was dark, but there was a luminescent green haze that lit the landscape and flowered around the rocky outcroppings like a living being. Fritz saw flocks of massive, dark blue, leech-like beings writhing through the glowing mist. Herds of roaming beasts looking vaguely like hairless antelope with long legs bent in random directions hobbled nearby. Their bodies were striated with a pattern of pulsating, light green stripes. They had long necks and were snagging the unsuspecting leech things as their schools glided in and out of holes in the stone. The antelopes had rows of curved, red blades in their mouths that they used to eviscerate the leech creatures, devouring the remains. Fritz stared in curiosity and disbelief at the strange food chain of these otherworldly animals. Soon he was eager to press on. Gottlick, increase the dosage. I'm not deep enough yet. All right, increasing dosage. Be careful. This is where things usually get hairy. Fritz heard the response as a faraway echo that bounded and bounced through the alien landscape. Don't worry, I'm made of sterner stuff than our former test subjects. A little bending of established natural law won't faze me. 
besides, we're close now. I can smell it. Just a few more adjustments and I'll be through, replied Fritz. The pendulum of dimensions took another sway down. The craggy rocks, glowing fog, tall antelope creatures, and flying leeches faded away. Fritz's reality was replaced with waves of flowing, colored light, as if he were afloat in an ocean of photonic surf. The waves shifted through every spectrum of color available to his feeble eyes, and probably some beyond. Objects that appeared to be crystalline polyhedrons floated and coursed about on the crests and troughs like brilliantly shining buoys. Each face of the multifaceted surfaces was an explosion of kaleidoscopic patterns, and each one was unique in its chaos. Fritz stared, enraptured by one of these. He felt it, as if it were gazing back. The geometric oscillations pushed on the barrier of his mind, breaking through, firing neurons that weren't meant to be active, and rewiring his synapses. Fritz closed his eyes, but the pattern remained, remolding his brain to match his own abstract gyration. Godlick! Increase the dose! What's wrong? Should I pull you out with the Narcan? replied Gottlick. Fitz heard a whisper that sounded as if it had originated within his ear. No time! Do it! Now! The pattern disappeared, and Fritz was whisked away. His right eye was blurry to the point of being useless, and the left half of his body was numb, paralyzed, and tingling furiously. He had the strange sensation of being able to think twenty thoughts at once, it was a boon for the scientifically-minded Fritz, but the cost was exorbitant. Blind eye aside, he could see nothing. What he could perceive, though, was a bombardment of sudden emotion. The feelings were tumultuous and varied, running from happy to sad, angry to depressed, love-struck to heartbroken, mournful to bliss, all in an instant. Had his mind not been altered, Fritz would have succumbed to the overwhelming cascade immediately. As it was, he was taxed to the limit by the tsunami of sensory emotion. His new mind was tested by filtering out the monumental amount of emotional information. Is this the anti-dimension? He thought out loud. It's terrible. No, no, it can't be. There is still something beyond. I must reach it. Godlick, send me further. His own voice was muffled. The only way he could hear it was through the flesh and bone of his own head. Godlick's words, however, rang out like an air raid siren. Fritz, I have to pull you out. We're reaching the lethal dosage for an ox. Let alone an aging scientist. Besides that, you're bleeding out. I can't stop the flow from your eye. I don't know what happened, or how you're still breathing, but I won't be responsible for another death. I've already killed so many. The emotional torrent seeped into Fritz's own psychological state. He felt all of them flowing over him like a disorienting waterfall of conflicting, reflexive responses. His words were a contradictive blend of yelling, pleading, howling, and sobbing. Godlick, you promised me. If I die, I die. I absolve you of all responsibility, all wrongdoing. You're not a medical doctor. You've taken no oath. And we threw away ethics long ago. Send me further. Fritz sighed in relief as he felt more fluid flow through the catheter and into his arm. Reality plunged past and he entered into the anti-dimension. Fritz was everything. And he was nothing. Material, 
immaterial, life, death, and abstractions that even his manic mind could not begin to fathom. Godlick, it's real. The anti-dimension is real. Come, dose yourself and let us mingle our minds. Let us unite as one. Come and combine your thoughts with mine. There was no answer. Something moved through the nothing. Another consciousness surrounded Fritz. It was not Gottlich. Fritz tried to resist its influence, but the thing's intentions were revealed through the melding of their being. Fritz let the thing consume him, for their goals were the same. Unity. Gottlich gaped, dumbfounded as Fritz woke up. He had administered the Narcan, but thought it had been too late. Fritz's vital signs had flatlined. He was a corpse. How? You were dead, said Gottlich. Me? His eyes now functioned better than they ever had, and he could see Gottlich's look of amazement and confusion in absolute detail. In fact, Fritz's body had been regenerated to a state that was healthier than even a young man at the peak of his life. I think you meant to say we were dead. What are you talking about? I am no longer. We are. Oh, no. It happened again. You've been driven mad, cried Gottlich unaware of just how right he was. Not mad, Gottlick. We just are. Release us and you can be us as well. No. No, I don't think I can. You need a doctor. Or, more probably, a psychiatrist. But don't you want to meet our new friend? Let us out of these bindings said Fritz, with a serenity that was uncharacteristic of the usually gung-ho, impassioned scientist. No, repeated Gottlich. Fritz flexed his arms and strained against the leather straps. The skin around his wrist split and reformed outside the bindings. Gottlich froze in fear and shock. Well, that's new, said Fritz as he clenched his fists. Now join us, old friend. Gottlich could see the predatory nature of Fritz's statement. He turned to flee, but Fritz was faster with his new enhancements. He grabbed Gottlich's arm. Gottlich tried to shrug the hand away, but it wouldn't budge. He saw that Fritz's fingers had bored down into his shoulder as if they were coated in acid. Before Gottlich could react, Fritz pressed his torso into Gottlich's body. They melded together into a physical amalgamation of the two and a combination of the three consciousness, three arms, four legs, a knotted mass of twisted torsos, and two fused heads. So how do we like our new friend? We, we already, already know, know that, that we, we like, like it, it a lot. lot. Yes, but often when we were just me, I loved to ask questions that we already knew the answer to, just to hear that answer repeated. We must throw off this old way of thinking. Our new friend is not a fan of individual quirks and personalities. True. Unity is more wonderful than the old me had ever envisioned. It is more than I could have hoped, said the head that formerly belonged to Fritz. It, it is, is a, a bit, bit lonelier in here than we'd like, like, replied the mouth of Gottlich. Then let us join with the rest of the world and bring about the peace and tranquility that could never have been achieved apart. <laughs>